Hey, hey, how is everybody doing? I just, I, I'm, I'm a little late. I'm a couple seconds late because I saw Frog Life with Hank is in the house. Like, I didn't even know my my wife's dog had a channel. So apparently he does. I know he has an Instagram, but hey, Alina's here. How are you? Alina left a very nice comment earlier. I know she watches a lot of uh, English teachers on YouTube uh, speak English with Vanessa. I saw her in that chat and, of course, Bob the Canadian. She's in with um, English Arts Academy with Karis. And she said some very nice things about me. So I know she knows her stuff about YouTube English teachers. So thank you, Elena. Hey, Sita's here. Thank you so much, Sita. Yeah, I just released a, um, a members video. I've been a little busy. My son had some hockey. He has some more hockey. Is uh, is Frog Life with uh, with Hank? Is that a moderator? We should uh, we should give Hank the, the the privileges here. I don't have that. Let's just put uh, put oh add it. Okay, moderator. That's my wife, Jamie. She's just under a different name. How are you? Welcome, SEO Wu is here. Hope everyone's doing well. Cecilia, how are you? Yeah, so we are uh, celebrating 6,000 subscribers. Thank you so much if you are one of them. Uh, but Cecilia, I think, has been around since uh, 100 subscribers. So thank you so much, Cecilia. I hope everything is going well in Argentina. Look at Daniel. Jeez. <laughs> Daddy's back home. Missed you all, kids. Daniel has been around since the beginning as well. So a lot of people have been around since the beginning. Maz. Hope all is well in Australia. Yawen, how are you? So let's get into some questions. That's what we're here for, right? We are here for some questions. I know, Ario, I know it's late where you're at. So he's in Indonesia. Hope all is well. What's that? Mr. Mark uploaded a video about head in the clouds and it slipped my mind. All right, well, let's, let's, I don't know if that's a question or not, but let's pretend it is. And we can talk about if your head is in the clouds, what does that mean? It probably means you're daydreaming. You're not completely present, whatever you're doing. If your head is in the clouds, it just means your mind is elsewhere. Your mind is elsewhere. You're not maybe thinking about what you should uh, slip my mind. Another way to say that you have forgotten. All right. Algeria is in the house. Uh, I love the country of Algeria. Most people there speak both French and Arabic and apparently English. A lot of people are learning English in uh, Algeria. Mega has a question. Sir, may I ask you that students have sports during class hours or after class gets over in schools. Great question, Mega. I love these questions because I can answer them. Sometimes I have a hard time answering the questions, but I can answer this one. So where my son goes to school, it's a private school. So private schools do things a little differently. Sometimes he has sports during his school day, but where I teach, it is a public school. So the sports all of the sports happen after school. Now, my wife teaches something called PE in English, and that is short for physical education. So they're getting an education, but I mean, they're using their mind a little bit. They're using their mental education. But when we say physical education, that is sports. That is sports. So she will teach people how to properly train, how to properly shoot a basketball. So those type of sports, gym class, we call it, or PE, that will happen during school. But if the students are going to compete against another school, soccer season or football, if you live in other places around the world, that is going on right now. So my school my school team will play other school teams that happens after school doesn't happen during the school day. Rena. Hey Brent, your videos help me a lot in improving my English. 
So nice to hear. Brought in my knowledge about the U.S. I have a question. What's the difference among street, way, road, avenue? Those are great questions. I guess a simple, let me, let me just get a little, let me just get a little water here. I guess the simple answer would be, you know, there really isn't a lot of difference. Um, I live on something called the street, right? The, the, my address is, is something street, but it could be called road. It could be called avenue. There really is no difference between road, avenue, street, boulevard, way. It just depends on what the person wants to call it. But if I had to rank these, and this is just kind of my personal opinion, I would say avenue might be the busiest. And then street would be the next busiest. And then road. And finally, way. But it really, don't worry about memorizing those because often streets are just given a name like boulevard or way for no reason, really, for no reason. Freddie Wolf, Freddie, Freddie left a message earlier. Yeah, I definitely am celebrating the 6,000 subscribers. I want to thank you all for that. But um, I can't fail to mention that it is the 20th anniversary of September 11th, you know, definitely a hard time for Americans 20 years ago. It's one of those days that you will remember exactly where you were when you heard about that second plane hitting the building. So I know exactly where I was. Hey, Brent, I hope you're doing well. All of my thoughts to the United States. It is a sad day, September 11th. God bless America. All the best. Thank you, Freddie from France. That means a lot. Daniel, what's Daniel saying here? Road UK, highway US. So highway is definitely different than all of the others that ha have been mentioned. Highway would be the busiest. A highway probably doesn't have stop signs, probably doesn't have red lights. So really, mega, sir. We learned that streets are called roads, which are connected to main roads. Eh, you know, maybe, maybe in the UK, but seriously, I promise. Um, the street names, they are literally named willy nilly. That's just fun to say willy nilly there. There is no rhyme or reason. There is often no thought in giving a street, the name of way road Avenue Boulevard hey, is Yawa. Yawa's here. Joseph. Hey, you're not late. We just got started eight minutes ago. Yeah. Okay. Raphael. Hey, Raphael. Um, I was in a live stream this week with um, Karis over at English Arts Academy. Check her channel out. She's awesome. And um, speak English with Vanessa. She's awesome too. And I saw Raphael there. It was so nice to see some familiar faces. Amina was in there. Who else was there? Madi was there. It's cool. Somebody else. I think and I, I missed. I, I forgot who it was, but there was a lot of people in there. So thanks for coming out. Yeah, Avenue, usually, usually big and important street. Yes, usually. But literally, I, I promise you, in my little town, we have an avenue. It might have five houses on it. Okay, two, two on. Can we use good luck for something? Is it correct? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think Sita uh, mentioned good luck um, earlier. My son has a hockey game. So she said, hey, good luck to him. Um, if somebody is going on a long journey, you might say, hey, good luck. If somebody has a big test coming up, you might say, good luck. Abu Ba, I thought you had a soccer game. Don't, don't be late for that soccer game. Like you said, you can, always watch, uh, you can always watch it on replay. Alex, Brent, tell me, please. What's the difference among come along and come? So if you say come along, 
to another person, that means you are going somewhere and you want them to come with you. So, hey, I'm going to the store. Do you want to come along? So, you know, the two of you will go somewhere. <sighs> come might be one of the most um, versatile words in the English language. And when I say versatile, I mean it can be used in many different ways. I literally could make a 20-minute video on all of the uses of come. But my wife recently has uh, acquired a dog. She bought a dog. And I often hear his name is Hank. I guess Frog Life with Hank, uh, they dropped out of this stream. I think they were here earlier. She is always saying, hey, come on, come on, come on, come along. But it usually means like the dog like is, is far away and you want the dog to come beside you, beside the prepositions, huh? Come on, along, beside, come over, come over here. Literally, I could spend probably an entire day, an entire day talking about that. Hey, Marty's here. Marty, good to see you, my friend. All right, Lucian from Romania. Hey, in Romanian, the phrase is your head is in the clouds would be equivalent with you're looking for what I think it might have gotten cut off, might have gotten cut off. But yeah, simply saying, hey, we started school recently here in the United States in the afternoon after lunch. I notice a lot of my students are daydreaming. They are thinking of other places they would rather be than my class. Can you believe it? I might say to the student who looks like he's daydreaming, is your head in the clouds? Come on. Back in the game, my friend. Let's go. I usually, oh, Frog Life's still here. Okay. All right. Frog Life's still here. Yeah. So what's, um, I could say that. You know, what, what are you doing, man? Your head's in the clouds. Jeez, Nathan. Nathan, what's your advice to understand fast English? Oh, my goodness. If I knew the key to that, man, I could, I could sell a class on. I, my best advice is that it takes a lot of time. Um, once you reach a certain level, and I know because I've spoken to people in this, in this room like Madi and uh, who else is in here that I've spoken to, um, there are some very good English learners in here. I think Sean from Free 99 English, is, his English is pretty good. But uh, at CETA, I've actually spoken to her. So if, you're, if your level is really high, I would suggest, you know, keep watching my videos, of course. But then I just made a lesson yesterday on the top five YouTube channels that will help you learn English by non-English teachers. So I think if you want to learn, you know, listen to people speak more quickly, you'll have to watch those videos where probably native speakers are speaking and they would speak exactly like they would to other native speakers. So I think the more you watch those videos made for native English speakers, the better you will be able to understand that fast English. Because right now I am trying to pronounce every word. I'm trying to be careful with my speech. But in a lot of native English videos, you know, we, we just don't care. We just realize that the native English speaker will hear us when we just smush our words together. We don't enunciate as well as we should. We don't pronounce everything like we should. So check that out. Um, I talked about the YouTube channel Lexi Limitless. So she has an international audience. She is speaking for native English speakers, but I think she also realizes there are non-native speakers who watch her channel. So she does enunciate pretty well. She does form all of those sounds. Also, Nathan, if you start listening to that fast English, turn on the subtitles at the beginning and just remove them when you feel comfortable. So I hope that helps. Hope that helps. Ah, Constantine 
flying in the clouds. If you said that in English, people would know exactly what you mean. Like, you're not listening. You're not listening. Come on, man. Where, where's your head at? Where's your head at? Marcello. Marcello has been around for a while. Good to see you in here. Thank you. Congratulations on the 6K. I've got a question or I have a doubt, which is correct. I would definitely go with the first one. If you're unsure about something and you want to ask somebody a question, literally just say that. Hey, I got a question. Do you want a dad joke for this? Here's a dad joke. Okay. If my student, they, they often ask questions and they might say, hey, do you mind if I ask you a question? The dad joke is, you just did. It's a lame joke. Do you mind if I ask you a question? It is a question. And the bad dad joke would have to say, oh, you already asked a question. I just, I just sometimes have to hide my head in shame over my bad dad jokes. But yeah, I'd simply say, hey, I've got a question. Um, what time are we eating dinner tomorrow? You know, you can start off like that. It lets the, uh, the listener know, oh, there's a question coming up. My head better not be in the clouds. I better pay attention. All right, let's see here. Ahmad, should we use the word are or is in a form to say something more than one? Countable and uncountable nouns. Thank you, Brent. Um, I mean, the, the rule is, and of course, in English, we break rules all the time. If something is singular, you're going to use is. If something is plural, you're going to use are. Um, this could be a, a whole video in itself because when you use each, each, it's always singular. Even though I don't want to get too much into the grammar here, but often there is a prepositional phrase in between the subject and the verb, which makes it seem kind of plural. But um, each one of the students is doing their homework. Like that's the correct way to say it. Each is always singular. Of the students is a prepositional phrase. It's not the subject, but... So I hope that helps. It's a, it's a really uh, complex question to answer without having like, I would like to put words flashing as I say it. So Ahmad, um, I hope that helps, but it, it's a pretty complicated question right there. Angelo from Qatar by way of the Philippines. He's dropping in. Yeah. My man is busy. He is busy. He is hard at work. Wait, hey, night bot. Angelo is my friend. You back off. Might have to get rid of Nightbot. Alex, can you speak a couple phrases fast as a native? Mm, I want to compare. Um, let's see. Um, let me tell you a little bit about my day, and then I'll try to speak um, like I would for maybe like a minute, okay, to, uh, to a native English speaker, okay? going to have to act here a little bit. I don't know if I can do it. But um, right after this live stream, I'm going down to Massachusetts because my son has a couple hockey games and uh, my wife and I, we're going to be staying in a hotel tonight. And I think my son might join us. Yeah, he usually stays at the dorms, but I think tonight just, you know, so he can uh, have a little one-on-one -on -one time with us that he'll be uh, sleeping in the hotel with us so we can spend a little bit of time with him. So hope that I hope that that wasn't too bad. It didn't feel quite natural to me because I'm speaking in a microphone and but hopefully that's a little bit more clear. But sometimes in these live chats, I do actually get pretty comfortable and I don't always enunciate. So sometimes I do slip into that natural speech. Look at this guy. We he's been around since the beginning. Yeah, I started the channel last January. I remember we was around. He was around in the early days. He goes to school in New York. And uh <laughs> I just saw something in the chat. I gotta I gotta talk about. Yeah, so he uh good luck, man. Good luck. He's starting a little bit later than we are here in Maine where I live because my students just had their 
seventh day of class. So we will have his first day of class on Monday. Yeah, Daniel, we, we got to get Jamie back in here. <laughs> I hope she's still around with uh, Frog Life with, with Hank. But yeah, Jamie, if you want to hear natural speech on this channel, check out. Um, it's a live stream Jamie did. My wife, uh, she did it solo. I think if you look up Jamie solo live stream, you know, English, this guy, something, it should come up <laughs> because she definitely does speak like a native daniel thank you so much for that that's a that's a good memory right there hey brent what about your puppy we can't hear it we miss him um i think he's upstairs but last week he was playing with a bone and so it kept rattling against the ceiling my ceiling his floor so i think uh jamie probably has he i know he just went on a walk but I think he's back. I think he's back. I hope I'm not missing anything in the channel, uh, in, the, in the stream here. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, reckon. Is the phrase I reckon used mostly in the South or is it just a stereotype? No, I don't think it's a stereotype. I do think it is used in the South quite a bit. We do not use it very often up here in the North, but sometimes you will hear it. One of the... Um, Harold Balder is a channel I love to watch. I mentioned him in yesterday's video about the top five English YouTube channels you can, you can use English with uh, by non-native. That's a long title, isn't it? The video I made yesterday. And Harold Balder is Norwegian, but he says reckon a lot. So even non-native English speakers use reckon. Hey, look at this guy. Angelo, he drops in for a little bit. I know my man is busy. And then he drops a super chat like that. You know what? Thank you so much. Got a little something here for you. Where is it? Right here. Thanks so much for the super chat. My voice is going to say that here in a minute. Here we go. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, Angelo, I do appreciate that. Angelo has been very kind to the channel. He was one of the first channel members when channel members became available to my channel well, about a year ago, I guess, somewhere, somewhere last summer. So Angelo, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate that. And I, and I have spoken to Angelo. It has been a long time. His English is very good, very good. And he, he might even speak um, three languages, I think. All right. Marty, Brent, I'm not sure what. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at school, I am an English teacher. So I actually teach English. But all of my students, they are, for the most part, I have 80 students. And I think 78 of them are native English speakers. So in my class, I teach English to native English speakers. And almost all of my students have been speaking English since they were born. Um, I do have a, a girl, actually a boy and a girl, uh, originally from China. So, But they were adopted at a very early age. So I do not think they have ever spoken Chinese. Uh, they were simply born in China. Uh, they are not related. I just happened to have them in the same class. But they have been living here, I think, for about 14 years, which is most of their most of their lives. All right, RK, please answer how Indian can adopt American accent. Just a few tips. All right, so if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, I always say keep your accent. Don't try to sound like an American. We have 330 million of us already. And even... even as Americans, when you're talking about accents, you know, native English speakers in the United States, um, I don't know, we have hundreds of accents already. So I would say, keep your Indian accent. It's, it's a cool accent. Keep your Indian accent. Just work on being, uh, being clear, you know, keep the accent. You just want to be understood. 
So, you know, don't try to sound like an American. But of course, if that's your thing, just keep watching videos like mine, videos like Speak English with Vanessa. She is also an American. I'm from Maine, and that is in the northern part of the United States. Um, she said that I sound a lot like Bob the Canadian. So I live, if, if Sean from Free 99 English is still here, he and I, Bob the Canadian, I think we sound very similar because we are from the northern part of the United States of North America. Speak English with Vanessa is from North Carolina. So she, she actually doesn't sound that Southern, but she will have a little bit of a different accent than I do. So just, and if you go out to California, they have a different accent. If you go up to Minnesota in the middle of the country, they have a different accent. So yeah, Ario. Ario is a big fan of Japan. Dan, can English native speakers understand everything in a rap song while the rapper sings it too fast? That is a great, great question. So if we are talking, let's say Eminem, because, uh, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a fan from back in the day. I haven't listened to Eminem for a little while. But when I did, I could pick up a lot of what he said. But remember, with rap music, it's very much like poetry. So if you need a word to rhyme or if you need a certain meter, that's what we call it when there's a certain beat or a certain rhythm to poetry, a certain meter, the word structure will change. So sometimes yes, sometimes no. But for some Eminem songs, I have looked up the lyrics on the internet to see what he was saying. So nope, not all the time. We can't, at least I can't, because he does uh, sing a rap very quickly and he does switch the word order a little bit, which can be a little, little, little tricky, a little tricky. Oh, yeah, a stan. You sometimes hear that, a stan, fan. Stan is slang for a fan. And guess what? It actually comes from an Eminem song. Yeah, Stan. What's that song? I know is Dido is in it. Dun, 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 dun. I can't remember the, can't remember it, but it's a great song. It's got Stan in the basement writing to Eminem. It's a good video. It's a good video. Oh, Casual English with Amy from the South. Hmm. All right. Where are you? What, what, what part of the uh, South are you from? I have spent some time in Alabama, but I do not have a, uh, oh, what is this? Amina. Amina. What is that? Is that contrarian? Is that contrarian? Am I reading that correctly? Um, what's an example of a contrarian? Let me look that up to make sure. But if it is contrarian, it just means someone who always disagrees. Someone who always disagrees, no matter what, they will try to find the opposite point of view. Okay. Contrarian. I think that's what that means. I mean, I know what contrarian means, but let's see uh, if that is exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's share the screen here. I have the ability to do that, Amina. Let's do that. Share the screen. Contrarian. Is it shared? It is shared. Yeah. Can you see that? It, it, it simply says a person who opposes or rejects popular opinion, especially in stock exchange dealing. Nah, I wouldn't worry about that, but it is somebody who is always saying the opposite. You probably do not want to be friends with a contrarian. Yeah. They're, they're just always wanting different things. Ah, Arkansas. Razorback country, Razorback country. Uh, so Amina, I hope that helps. Amina, long time supporter of the channel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Andre, are you planning to make some grammar lessons in the future? Man, you know, I should put up a poll. I should put up a poll. It's like, do you want to see grammar lessons or are grammar lessons boring? 
sometimes we make that that uh, uh, you know it's like uh it would make me want to puke grammar i know some people love grammar some people hate grammar but maybe i sh- i should put up a poll let me see got a pen right here let me write poll grammar question mark feel free uh feel free to write in the chat too if you would like um is it good grammar just give me a, a yes no grammar let me write this here let me write this here is grammar fun yes or no yeah just give me a yes or a no if you would please then that'll be a quick poll and then i'll put up a i'll put up a real poll here oh no thank you for becoming a member but i definitely i think you've been a member already haven't you xcx i always mispronounce your name but uh, let me give you a little something here. I don't think you're a new member though, but this says new member. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. Yeah, so I, I think XEX has been a uh, member already, but if you're new, check out the Discord server. We're in there chatting every day, sharing the food we're eating the books we're reading, the places we're traveling. I'll probably put up a picture of the the hotel I'm staying at. I did put up a video last week. I was at a hotel and our hotel lost electricity. But uh, check us out. I lo- love the uh, profile picture there too. I think it's a pug, which is kind of like what my wife's dog is. Notice I never say my dog or I rarely say my dog. It's her dog, her dog. But XCX, thank you so much for becoming a member. Whoa, Jada. So there is a yes for grammar. What? Definitely, definitely. Okay, XCX. I thought, I thought, I thought. Yeah, renewed. Okay, I I remember you in there. I remember you in there. I want to. Uh, I would love to visit Arkansas. Seems like a nice place to go. Do you know Arkansas? The most famous thing about Arkansas, at least in my opinion, the most famous thing about Arkansas, Walmart, Walmart is from, is from Arkansas, not my dog, hashtag not my dog, not my dog, he's a pain, he's, oh, Nightbot, what are you doing to Emma, come on, Emma is not even spamming the chat, is she? Grammar is boring. Okay. Okay. Maybe I will make some grammar videos. I missed your comment. It said, it said you were spamming the chat. Oh, is it because of the emojis? Look at, I saw that comment right there. Emma, how are you? So Freddie, Freddie from France says grammar. A yes. But Constantine says yes and no. Okay. I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. Cray space. First comment. Well, welcome. Hey, Brent, this is my first comment and you're live. I'm confused about these words. Ooh, sweets, breads, cakes, pastries, and bakery. Could you explain them to me? You know what I would love to do, actually? Can I make this happen? I would love to go to a bakery and talk about each of those words. So should I do that? Let's see, bakery. I'm going to put that right down now. Bakery visit. Maybe we can visit. A bakery. Okay. So, and Bill, look at this. Amina. Amina knows her American history. Yes. One of our presidents, Mr. William Clinton, Bill Clinton is from Arkansas. Yeah. Arkansas. All right. Not my dog. Um, so sweets, um, we do use that for pretty much anything that has a lot of sugar and is baked. So cakes, cookies, um, pies, even pies. Yeah. We might just say, Hey, um, I'm going to the bakery. You want me to pick you up any sweets? How about that for a native, uh, English speaker? You want to, you want me to pick up anything at the bakery? Wanna, instead of saying want to, we often change it to wanna, Hey, you want, you want me to pick up anything from the bakery? You want some sweets? Uh, breads, 
man, to confuse things. There are things called sweetbreads in English, but uh, they I think they're kind of gross. They're they're certain parts of of an animal. Let me let me look that up. Sweetbreads. I'm not exactly sure what sweetbreads are in English, but they're not sweet and they're not bread. Yeah. Okay. If you are squeamish, if you don't like to see organs like heart, liver, I didn't really see what this is, but it is, uh, it's something that's not sweet and it's not bread. So be careful. If you ever go into a restaurant in the United States and you see sweet breads on the menu, beware. It is not, hang on. I just messed up. It is not what you think. Sweet breads. What is this? Let's learn this together. Oh yeah. It's, um, it's part of the throat, the gullet or the neck or a pancreas or the stomach or the belly. Yeah. So be careful. It's that stuff. I don't, that, right. Like that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good right there on the side. Looks like it's fried. But uh, that does not look good. No, thank you. So that is sweetbreads. Let's get let's get rid of that. So be careful. Uh, sweets, breads, cakes, pastries. So a bakery would be where you would find those sweet things. But man, I need to do that. I need to go into a bakery. I need to go look at this. Hey, thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, could you could you throw a like? Could you throw a like on the video? It might, it might help other people. That's what I'm talking about. Yuck. Raw. That's a good term to know. The opposite of cooked. So cooked, those sweet breads actually looked pretty good. I think most Americans, we like things that are fried. And it had that little breading. But oh, the raw. So gross. Look at this. Yawin. Thank you so much. Yawin has been very supportive of the channel. I do appreciate it. Here you go. We'll super chat. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. And Yawin has been very helpful uh, for a video that I made a while back. Um, she won a contest I had. Was it for, maybe it was for like 5,000 subscribers or something, but um, she and I chatted for about a half an hour, 40 minutes. And then she wrote me a little note after about all the differences between Taiwan and the United States. And I made a video about it. So if you want to know some of the differences between uh, Taiwan and the United States, you can check out that video. And one thing that she said was in Taiwan, most people will take off their shoes when they enter a house. I don't know about that for uh, Americans most of the time. Sometimes guests in a house will leave their shoes on. It's kind of gross, I think. Kind of gross. What about Arkansas? Amy, do they take their shoes off in Arkansas? Sean, Canada, do you take your shoes off? I know in Russia... I don't know if Alina is still here or Constantine, but I know in Russia, you must take your shoes off before entering, right? Why do we cook bacon and bake cookies? Hmm. Let's ponder that for a minute. English is weird. I should have named this channel English is weird because English is weird. Yeah, Marty. Yeah, not a great anniversary for the United States. Um, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but uh, yeah, my thoughts. Um, I think there were roughly a little over 3,000 Americans lost on that day. Um, this week on the way home from school, my daughter and I had a, a chat about 9-11 and I just talked about you know where I was that day exactly what I remember. Yeah. Not a, not a good one. Not a good one. Oh geez. What is this? We drive on a parkway and park on a, on a driveway. English is weird. What the heck? English. Hey, but, but you're the ones learning English. I, I, I didn't invent it. I'm just, I'm just trying to teach it. 
just trying to teach it. Hey, Danny's here from, from France. Welcome. All right. I'd love to watch a video in the bakery. And yes, for the grammar lesson. Oh, dear. So we need to talk about uh, verb tenses and prepositional phrases and gerunds and look. Um, who earlier, I think somebody, was it Constantine said that, thank you, look at this. Mind your business, Nightbot. Thank you, Emma. I love it. Daniel, I am left-handed. I am left-handed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nightbot. I'm I'm not happy. Nightbot is the one spamming. Shirley. Hey Shirley. How are you? Looks like grammar is boring. What a constant. Okay. Um, I think Constantine says we need it. Um yeah, I would I would say that you might not need grammar. It would definitely help. And I think I've shown this before. I have it right here. My Italian grammar book, Grammatica Italiana per tutti. But I don't, and this is a gift from my buddy, Arone. Um, you know, I don't study grammar that much. I find it a lot more interesting to read or listen to the language I'm learning. So hopefully you are kind of learning grammar on this live stream simply by me speaking. You will learn the, the prepositions that I use. You'll use the verb tenses. And I'm hoping this lesson is a little bit more exciting than a grammar lesson. I'll get my whiteboard out. All right, over here we have the, uh, the, uh, the apostrophe and then the, we got this comma here after this gerund and so uh, all right but but hey who am i to argue some people some people said that they want to see the grammar they want to see the grammar again yawin thank you so much thank you so much a couple more questions here all right can you see my joseph can you see my question there's your question was that your question see, i'm going to use my dad joke right here can you see my question um, yeah, it's right there, isn't it? Is that right there? I send you 10. I didn't see the question. I didn't see the question. Raphael. Hello, Brent. 20 years ago, your country was attacked by extremist terrorists. When you heard the news, what was your first impression? Did you feel fear, nausea, panic? Yeah, thanks for the question. I felt all of that. Yeah, I was actually, my wife, Jamie, was teaching. So she had a teaching job. I was in my last year at college or my last year at university. So I was still learning to be a teacher. I was in a classroom with other teachers learning to teach. We were going to go into our classrooms with students, um, but then everything just changed and we basically didn't teach anything that day. We just watched the TV. And I remember when I first arrived to my classroom, um, it was a bright sunny day. It was a Tuesday. I remember everything about that day. And um, one of um, a student at the, at the time, I was a student at the time learning to teach. So one of my classmates said, um, hey, uh, a plane, you know, ran into a, ran, flew into a building. That was in New York. I was in Alabama, which was probably a thousand miles away. So our first thought was, oh my gosh, it was, it was pretty cloudy, right? It must have been must have been cloudy up there. That's too bad. I don't I don't know how a plane could hit a huge building like that. But if you are, you know, old enough to remember a world before 9-11, planes, big planes crashing into buildings that that was something we have never seen before and so i remember there was probably 20 minutes in between the first and second plane so we were all just oh it's crazy oh my gosh we did not turn on the news we didn't we didn't stop anything we just thought oh that's that's awful and then when the second plane hit 
um, we knew at that point, like, no, that's not an accident. So um, I remember my, you know, professor saying, uh, well, we, we can't have class anymore. Just, you know, do what you got to do. So me and a couple of my buddies went up into the classroom where there were actual students. So it's, it's kind of hard to explain because I was a, I was a student teacher, but then we went into a high school classroom and we just sat there and just watched as it was replayed. And of course, another plane would hit the Pentagon and, you know, that's like the, the big defense building in the United States. And so I remember one of my classmates saying, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be a teacher anymore. He wanted to sign up for the military right then. So a lot of people had anger. Uh, he wanted to completely quit school and go sign up for the military to fight whoever did this for us. And I'm glad that Raphael said extremists, extremists, because I know for a while after 9-11 and, and probably even today, a lot of people think, oh, it was, it was Muslims who did this, people who believe in Islam. So I think most people will use that extremist, extremist adjective that no, these were not Muslims. They do not follow Islam. They were something different. Like people who, who are Muslim would not do this to the United States. So I think that's an important thing to remember when we talk about 9-11, that it was a, a unique group in that community and 99% of the people in that community, Muslims, would not agree with what happened on that day. So, yeah, it was crazy. Um, I remember gas prices shot up. Shot up is another way to say the gas prices increased that day by a lot. So, it was a scary time. We didn't know. And I'm sure around the world, people didn't know how would this change us. So, yeah, not a great day, that's for sure. Life life for almost everybody, I think, changed. More security at the airport. Um, in the United States, probably less freedom. You know, the government knows more about us because of the... Uh, yeah, I won't get into that, but there's a, a Freedom of Information Act that happened after that. All right. Is it common native speakers uh, make mistakes about grammar? Oh, all the time, all the time. Um, and I think some people think I'm crazy when I say my students, 13 and 14 year old students, I do not think they are C1 when it comes to English. I do think they are probably B2. Now, of course, some of them have some really great students and I'm sure they are C1 or C2. But I think most of the 13 and 14 year olds that I teach, they're not, they're not C1. I think they're B2, All right? My son has a hockey game. I want to thank everybody for joining. I did not get to all of the questions. I know I missed a lot. Um, really quickly, do I teach grammar to my students? The short answer is no. Well, every so often I do. That's a great question. Ahmad, I focus on other things. We do a lot of reading. We do a lot of writing in my class. And I do not teach grammar to the whole class. What I do is I sit down one-on-one -on -one with my students and I figure out where their grammar is lacking. So I very rarely do a grammar lesson at the board. I usually sit down with each student and and when after I read their writing, then we go over exactly what they need. Hey, Angelo, again, thank you so much for that super chat. Constantine, yeah, crazy day, crazy day. It, 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 exactly. It looked like special effects in a movie. Alexandria, thank you so much. Raphael, yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. Again, thank you so much. I mean, I could not literally do this without you. I need help, right? I need 6,000 people to help me get those 6,000 6, subscribers. 6,000 subscribers. You want to practice some pronunciation? 6,000 6, subscribers. That's a tough one. But 
Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you so much, Mega. Thank you. Yeah, I should do, Zoe. I should do a hockey lesson. Daniel, thank you so much. Hey, Aroni. Hello. Arrivederci. My my friend, I need to go. Aniko, Aniko, I remember you at the beginning. You're still here. Thank you so much, everyone. Ario is still here. So a lot of people have been here the whole time. Thank you so much. Got to keep grinding. Got to keep working hard. Another way to say working hard is grinding. So Daniel, thank you so much for your support. I, just, I literally cannot thank you all enough. So many people, it's been so great to meet you over the last year or so. And um, I hope we just have another great year, right? Hopefully a great year we can get out. No more lockdowns, all that stuff. Thank you so much. Awesome. 